Hey there, I'm gonna show you what a day of field work in Highland County looks like. Non-native invasive plants reduce biodiversity. We're interested in how non-native shrubs affect the abundance and biomass of caterpillars on trees that golden winged and chestnut-sided warblers forage on most because caterpillars are a main source of food for these two bird species. Our focal shrub species include blackberry, which is native, as well as autumn olive, multiflora rose, and barberry, which are all invasive. Here we've got a cherry tree surrounded by blackberry, our native shrub. Just start throwing supplies on there. It'll be good for the Instagram. I have a vision here. Now Eric is measuring the height of the tree. And here me and Anna are getting the branch clipping supplies ready. How this works is we first collect the branch in a bag which Anna has on the left, and then I use the pruner pole to clip the branch into the bag. We've got a nice caterpillar here. So we're gonna enter this in our data sheet. We've got the name of the point, the date, the time, the species, CHE stands for cherry. Got the height, we're gonna get the DBH. And I would say this is a smooth caterpillar between one and three centimeters. Here we're getting the DBH or diameter of the tree. Hey guys, so Abby already took the DBH of the tree and the next step is to take a vegetation survey of the surrounding area. Um, this helps us to understand how much of the area is native or invasive as far as shrub cover and saplings go. So this is what our data sheet looks like. Um, we are looking for associational effects directly. So for the things within the first two meters of the tree, we're marking in a different pen color. And then Abby is going to step with 10 meters in each direction um, around the tree and we're going to try to get a good estimate of what is surrounding this locust. So right here we're going south and I'm about two meters from the tree and straight ahead when I look through this toilet paper tube I'm gonna see some barberry and it's greater than a meter and then when I look up through the ocular tube I'm seeing a black locust with a dbh greater than 10. After we sort through these samples they'll be taken back to Richmond Virginia to be dried and then weighed. And that is pretty much it for our field work. Thank you so much to everyone who has helped out with this project so far.